there's only four players in NBA history who have recorded averages of at least 20 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks per game in their rookie season. But when you add in at least three assists per game, only one of these players remain. Victor Wembanyama. to the league, there was hype behind Wimbenyama that had not been seen in two decades with the arrival of the Chosen One, but this was the arrival of the alien. I think everybody's been a unicorn over the last few years, but he's more like, like an alien. Unlike any basketball player ever seen before, seven foot four in height with an eight foot wingspan, but the mobility and ability to put the ball on the floor and shoot from the perimeter like a six foot four guard. The expectations for Victor Wimbenyama immeasurable. Uh, I believe one of my colleagues called you the best prospect ever in team sports. Maybe not only the greatest prospect in the NBA's history, maybe the greatest prospect in the history of team sports. That just goes in one ear and out the other. There's no pressure for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, true. No pressure from that. And uh, it's, it's not like a reward when, when they say that, you know? you know? When I need motivation, when I need energy and I feel tired out, when I need to fight on the court and it's, it's hard, I always remember. I'm, f I'm free in that universe. I know what I want to do and nothing's going to stop me from doing it. With the first pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, Victor Wembanyama from Nantar, France. Hearing that, that sentence from Adam Silver, you know, uh, I've dreamed of it so, so much now. <laughs> I gotta cry, man. You were talked about as the best prospect in NBA history. Is that something you want to be called? Being the first overall pick was uh, an achievement, but being the best prospect is it's not really a thing, so. Just two weeks after being drafted first overall by the San Antonio Spurs, Victor Wimbanyama would get his first NBA action in Summer League, with the sold out crowd in Las Vegas all anticipating a show, a show that wouldn't go on. We want him to come out and have one of those statement games where you see him blocking shots, dominating the glass. And we also want to see one of those freakish highlights that we saw in the French Premier League. We didn't get that. And if there was any freakish highlight from this game, it would be Kai Jones dunking on Victor, which personified the miserable game he had, scoring nine points on 13 shots, looking completely out of it. Fans went to social media and had a whole lot to say about the disappointing debut, with some who were already praying for his downfall, declaring him as a bust. Victor had to show us what he was really made of in game two. And this game would be the show that everyone expected in the first game, displaying his otherworldly skill set while putting up 27 points on 14 shots to go along with 12 rebounds against the Blazers. Everyone had questioned him, and he had an answer to it all. What are the rest of your plans for the summer? Do you plan on playing any more in summer league? And then after that, what is what are the next two, three months going to look like for you heading into the season? I got to talk with Pop. Uh, I'm going to listen to what he's going to say, but I'm ready to I'm ready to make any sacrifice for the team. Two to three great months go on. That are, that are coming and they're gonna they're gonna change my life i'm probably gonna disappear from the media for for the next month honestly the spurs later announced that victor would be shut down for the remainder of the summer league after these first two games and like he said he would he did disappear from the media but as victor went silent the talk around him raged on and while a lot of hype remained around his name the doubters came out making their statements as well former nba star tim hardaway senior said i think bobo is better than victor wabama or whatever his name is bobo has better better physical talent and is more ready to play in the NBA right now than Victor is. Tracy McGrady made a statement saying, the hype is crazy to me. It's too much, bro. I've seen this before. Y'all act like you haven't seen it. That shit that Bobo can do, he's just not given a real opportunity like I think he should. Chris Stapp's Porzingis was highly skilled when he came out too, just like that. And he's seven foot three too, so I've seen it. But this was all just outside noise to Victor, who was asked about the upcoming season with the San Antonio Spurs, as he said, the ideal start would already be the playoffs. For the rest, the best thing is not knowing. I hope it will surprise me and it will be beautiful. It's no secret that it's hard to win a ring, but I'm patient and I know it will happen. All right, now before we get further into Victor Wimbayama's story and see him prove all the doubters wrong, I wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Now, as people, we all have our trials and tribulations and struggles. I remember last year, there was a point where I was getting very overwhelmed with the amount of work that I was putting myself through and the amount of things that I was doing. It was a rough time, you know, I was feeling burnt out and that definitely was a time where therapy could have helped me. With BetterHelp, they connect you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful advice. And the great thing is that they allow you to communicate with your therapist in whichever way is more 
more comfortable for you, whether that be a phone call, messaging, or a video chat. To get matched with a professional with years of experience in helping people with struggles like yours, you can head over to betterhelp.com slash willsoultrill and then answer a few questions. And usually within 48 hours, you will be matched with a therapist. This is something that really could have helped me out last year when I was going through my own things. So let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you from the comfort of your own home. Head over to betterhelp.com slash willsoultrill where you will get a special discount on your first month. But now let's get back to it and introduce the rival of Victor Wimbledon. You and Chet have been connected for years. I know you've played each other before, but the two of you playing that way in the first half, what was that like to experience? Personally, I was feeling good. I was feeling like I had a lot of energy. I felt like he, he hurt us uh, in the first half. I know it's just preseason, but for sure the, the games against OKC, OKC are going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, do you guys have any relationship? No. In their first action against each other since 2021, when they faced off in the U19 World Cup final, Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holmgren put on a display of what the future of the NBA has in store in what was only a preseason game. But this preseason game was enough to get people talking about these two and how a new NBA rivalry was here. And I think this Chet Holmgren, Victor Wembanyama rivalry, it started a few years ago uh, when they were playing for France and USA. I so these are two players who have history together. You have this traditional rival with San Antonio and Oklahoma City. It was born, reborn again last night. With Chet Holmgren missing the entire previous season, recovering from an injury, he would officially be classified as a rookie entering the 2023 to 2024 NBA season, which meant that Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holmgren would be fighting for the Rookie of the Year award with Victor as the favorite before the start of the season. These two players were already connected and they were going to continue to always be connected. The official arrival of Victor Wembanyama was now imminent in his first career regular season game against the Dallas Mavericks. He'd only get 23 minutes of action as he played in foul trouble for a lot of the game, but he would impress everyone with the ability he showed hitting a number of shots from outside, including a three-point shot for the first points of his NBA career. That unique skill set already being presented to the 19,000 fans at Frost Bank Center and 3 million more fans watching live, making this the most watched opening night NBA game in 11 years. But his performance against the other Texas team in Houston would be much more impressive than his debut, making huge winning plays down the stretch. No other human being, Bill, has any right to dunk this one. Rockets, advantage, Smith. Oh my, blocked by Wemby. Blocked oh. again by Wemby, get it out of here. Back to back blocks. And Jabari Smith tried to challenge him, and he found out. And then Yama on the drive. He scores! We're tied! With these big plays down the stretch, the Spurs were able to force overtime. And in that overtime, the Spurs began to take control, going on to win their first game of the Victor Wimbanyama era behind 21, 12, and 3. Two of those points came off this mid-range jumper over Dylan Brooks, who Victor taunted afterwards for the statements that he made before the game. But the third game of his career would not treat Victor kindly. He scored just 11 points and had five turnovers in a blowout 40-point loss. And after a quiet six-point first half against the Phoenix Suns in the following game, Shaq made a statement to downplay the unique abilities of Wimby. He's never seen a guy like uh, Wimby on it. Yes, you have. His name is Bobo. You think Bobo? Let, 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 let me finish my point. Are they both black or something? No, no, let me finish my point. Wimby Wimbenyama is just way more consistent than Bobo. Bo. But Wimbenyama seemed to have a quick response to Shaq's words as if he heard them with the big second half where he was especially big in the fourth quarter making clutch plays, scoring nine points and blocking two shots that would help San Antonio complete a huge comeback to win the game. And with the Suns on the schedule again just two days later, while also knowing what Shaq said, Victor wanted to make an even bigger statement than before. But again, look at Victor on that right wing. Wimbenyama right on the floor. That's, that's the highest on the screen you've drawn on the telestrator. Your career. Oh <laughs> Tried to sidestep Wembenyama, Trey Jones pushing. Back to Victor. Look out. Lift off and detonation for Wembenyama. A wide open three. And Malachi tries to get back to Grayson Allen. Victor Wembenyama. Nothing but the bottom on that three pointer out top. And that's 17. Final 10 seconds. Wembenyama step into a three. Victor Wembenyama. The switch with Grayson Allen. I'll throw it up to him. Malachi. Back to Victor for two more. Spin move inside on the baseline. Back to Wemby upstairs. Victor throws it down. Timeout, Suns. Wembenyama met out top by Eubanks. Victor, pull up three. Got it. Victor Wembenyama hits the strings. He should not be in a hurry. 
Victor pulls up at the elbow, and Victor Wembanyama, 38 points with 10 <laughs> rebounds tonight. After a 38-point career high, Victor Wembanyama had earned KD's respect, and it wasn't just his respect that was earned. The entire NBA landscape was put on notice after this performance. He ain't even turned 20 yet. This brother, mm -hmm. Wembanyama, the real deal. He, he's the real deal. And by the way, he'll probably be an all-star as a rookie. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. What happened? <laughs> I don't even believe what I saw last night. That kid's 19 years old, right. and he was doing that? And Mike, the way he looked in summer league, I was a little worried. I'm not worried after the first 10 days of the NBA season. James, I was watching him, and I thought to myself, and it was weird, I had this epiphany. I said, this is the worst he's ever going to look. Victor Wimbayama was now coming off the best game of his career thus far with the Spurs holding a 3-2 record to start the season. Things were looking great, but over the next five games, the Spurs would fall back to reality on a losing streak where Victor averaged almost 19 points, 10 rebounds, and just over 2.5 blocks over that stretch. But heading into his 11th game now of his career, this would be the matchup that everyone was anticipating. The first official face-off between Victor Wimbayama and Chet Holmgren in the NBA. These two rookies, those are the two that everyone is saying one of them will be rookie yeah. of the year so now we get to see them for the first time go head to head play against each other but the highly anticipated matchup between the rookies would be a huge disappointment victor finishing with an inefficient eight points and chet finishing with an inefficient nine points and a blowout okc thunder win extending the spurs losing streak now to six games but this spurs losing streak would continue onward for another month as they would end their 18 game losing streak against the los angeles lakers in victor's first game against lebron james but even during this long 18-game losing streak, Wimbanyama was his usual self, impressing a number of his opponents. You just can't do the same thing you normally do. Like he blocked my shot on a uh, on a floater, and the only thing you think he jumped, he just went like that and knocked it off the backboard. So. He's one of them ones, you know, generational talent. Um, it was fun going to get some tonight. He's a dude that can get two or three defensive player of the years, and also. I don't want to put no limit on it, but he can get defensive player of the years and MVPs. We haven't seen nothing like that. We've seen things close, but not like that. I mean, he's an amazing player. Victor's opponents were impressed, and that was rightfully so. He was making plays unlike anything we had seen before, and also putting up strong averages of 19 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks per game through his first 23 games as an NBA player while on a minutes restriction. He did this with numerous mind-blowing stat lines, eight blocks against the Memphis Grizzlies, four blocks and six steals against the Denver Nuggets, 30 points and six blocks against AD and the Lakers, and a 2020 stat line against against the Chicago Bulls that hadn't been seen by a rookie in over 30 years when Shaq did it back in 1991. His statistical performances were so impressive that he became the first player ever to record 350 points, 50 assists, 50 blocks, and 25 steals in the first 20 games of his career. But despite all of Victor's incredible numbers, he had still lost his grip on being the favorite for the Rookie of the Year award, finding himself second to Chet Holmgren, whose OKC Thunder was sitting at number two in the Western Conference. I think it's very clear, and I think you guys will agree with me on this, that Chet Holmgren is the Rookie of the Year right now. With these two players being the competitors that they are in this tightly contested back and forth Rookie of the Year race, they were both circling their calendars for January 24th. But Victor had another day circled on January 4th, not just because it was his birthday, but he was preparing to face basketball's best in Giannis Antetokounmpo. The real story was the performance of both of its stars, Victor Wimbanyana, the rookie and rookie of the year candidate for the San Antonio Spurs, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, the former league MVP, okay, former NBA Finals MVP, champion with the Milwaukee Bucks. They put on a show. The last two months, absolutely balling. A spinner by Wembenyama. 68 games played, amazing, yeah, where he is now. And the combo sneaks it in. Fake a spin, a step inside. And look at them guard one another. Trying to poke it away. Uh oh, oh! Here's the move by Giannis and the finish. Right afterwards, just throw it off the glass. <laughs> Be defensively. First time these two teams met, Wemby didn't play. Here's in the NBA. 
Finds it to Kubo. Galloping soars for two. Timeout in his 10th. 12 for Middleton. Rembenyama. Oh, goes to the And puts it down. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at this. This is around a guard in Lillard and a finish over a seven-footer. Rembenyama. Look at this. Whoa. Lillard out of the combo. Here we go with the Bucks. Lillard finding Giannis out of the combo inside. With Portis defended. Inside, Wembenyama got it. Have you ever seen a guy be able to do what we saw from Victor Wembenyama in that third quarter? The answer is no. Then we can't tell you enough. This Milwaukee team has struggled on the road in the way, and they clear it out. Now will step back and take it free. Giannis drains it. It's Jones racing the other way. Vassell, Rembenyama, three. Good. Lumbo outside, under a minute to go. Giannis drives, drops the sledgehammer. The screen, the drive. Oh, it's knocked away by Rembenyama. Ultimately, the Bucks would pull out the win despite a huge effort from San Antonio and Victor Wimbanyama, mainly due to a 44-point performance by Giannis Antetokounmpo, who had a lot of respect for Victor after the game ended. Um, he's, he's special. Um, he's going to be extremely good player. I've never seen anything like him, 7'4", seven, 7'5", seven, I don't know how tall he is. He's not 7'3", he's way taller than 7'3". Uh, so whoever say he's 7'3", that's a lie. Uh, somebody I grew up watching and... Uh one of the greatest players in the world, so it's always uh, extra motivation. And I'm a competitor, so I'm, I'm, I want to go at everyone and be be the bad guy on the court. You know, so it's a, it was a great matchup. This game should the be the advertisement for the NBA of why you want to watch the NBA. The second night of a back-to-back -back in January, Giannis puts up that performance. Victor wants all the smoke. A matchup between the future of the NBA and the league's best went down as maybe the best game of the season up to this point. So far in the season, Victor was only playing in 29 minutes per game as the Spurs continued to place him on a minutes restriction, being very careful with getting him acclimated to the NBA game, which only made all of his numbers even more impressive, being only the second player in NBA history to average three blocks and one steal a game in under 30 minutes per game, something only done before by the previous winner of the defensive player of the year award. Just 31 games into his career, Victor had already accumulated the most 20.4 block games in under 26 minutes in NBA history. And he also had a four game stretch where he put up over 35 points, 10 rebounds, four assists, and six blocks per 36 minutes doing unprecedented things in his limited time. His impressive performances in limited minutes only continued into his next game, where in only 21 minutes, he would record a triple-double against Detroit, dropping 16, 12, and 10, including this full-court outlet pass. A historical game where Victor became the youngest center to record a triple-double, the youngest spur to record a triple-double, the youngest player to record a triple-double without a turnover, and had the second-least minutes played with a triple-double in NBA history. But it was all leading up to that circled calendar date. With the left side fadeaway jumper to help give his thunder the victory. When Benyama with a spin. That the Spurs organization has been able to do. And there's another block by Wimby. Gildas Alexander kicks it out to Holmgren for three. They dub over to Holmgren. Good show and go on Sohan. Lost his balance. Very clearly, if you follow these two teams. Wimby with a mismatch. Good help by Chet, but it didn't matter. But earlier, going deep into his bench. Holmgren spinning. Got it punched and hijacked. Yeah. To get him on campus in Tallahassee. Nice rim run by Wimby. Wembenyama flashes and poaches it home. Oh, he covered the ground. <laughs> Holmgren pulls the three, got it. Goes quick against Holmgren and slammed it home. Put his shoulder into Chet. Spins. Almost got it with the left and not sure who tipped that in, but Wembenyama's nodding his head like, yeah. Amazing. And if you notice his post-game media sessions, as Wembenyama is going to have something to say after the game. I mean, I wasn't matched up against him the whole game. Uh, you know, my first goal is always to win, and I don't, I don't. Th in a game like this, I don't think about that, especially in a, in a loss. Would, would you rather have had it been not one-on-one, -on -one, it's a team game, but he guards you, you guard him, and 
for a stretch of the game, you guys just kind of go at it? I mean, I haven't played really one-on-ones all, all year. It's uh, always one-on-two or something, so it's not a really a thing. With their latest matchup, it really encapsulated the Rookie of the Year race, right? You have Chet getting the win, Victor putting up the stats. Who do you have having the edge in this? Uh, me, 100% Chet Holmgren. The numbers are obviously in favor uh, of uh, Wimby, but I look at this. If you're the number one pick and you add to a team, the idea is that you make the team better. They lost 18 games in a row, and I understand that Chet Holmgren has a much better team. Victor doesn't have, but that's not his fault. That's one of the reasons why I've got Holmgren above Wimbyana. Rookie of the year is not just about your skill set, yeah. not just, oh my God, I got my numbers even when we're getting blown out. But behind a strong month of January by Victor Wimbenyama averaging 24 points, nine rebounds, three assists, and three blocks per game, he would regain his control as the betting favorite to win Rookie of the Year while winning his first Rookie of the Month award over Chet. The month of January was closed out especially strong against the Minnesota Timberwolves, where Victor made some huge plays against the Defensive Player of the Year favorite and fellow Frenchman Rudy Gobert. The highlight of the game being a sham god to beat Rudy for a layup. The sham god I did, so I've been working on it. I was surprised that I could apply it in game and recognize the situation. So so quick. When Benyama finished the game with 23 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks, but most importantly, the win over the two seed Minnesota Timberwolves. A strong performance that would help Victor in reclaiming his spot at number one on the Rookie of the Year odds, all leading into February, where there was another circle date on his calendar at the end of the month. To begin the month of February, the NBA was set to announce the reserves for the 2024 All-Star Game. Of course, Victor wouldn't be selected as a starter over the Western Conference's superstars just yet, but he had a chance to make an All-Star appearance as a reserve. Making the All-Star Game as a rookie is an extremely rare category to be in, with only two players since the turn of the century being selected as rookies. Victor, of course, looking to add his name to make it three. But as the names of the reserves were announced, the chances of Victor's name being called fell more and more until there was no chance left. Victor Wimbenyama left out of the All-Star game in his rookie year. Although Victor couldn't become the first rookie in over a decade to make an All-Star appearance, he would make his own history just two weeks later right before the All-Star weekend. Against the Toronto Raptors, Wimbenyama put up 23 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 blocks through the first three quarters of the contest, just one block away from a triple-double with blocks. With less than seven minutes left to go in the game, he would complete his historical stat line. Victor Wimbayama finished the game with 27 points on 70% shooting to go along with 14 rebounds, 10 blocks, and 5 assists. Not only a stat line never recorded before in the history of the league, but also the only player to ever record more than 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 blocks with under 30 minutes played in the game. And the youngest player in NBA history to record a triple-double with blocked shots. By the All-Star break, Victor had also already become the first player in NBA history to have a season with 150 blocks, 150 assists, and 75 made threes. And with all the comparisons and the hype to LeBron James, the All-Star break was a good point to compare what these two players had done up to that point. Victor leading in all numbers except assists and steals while playing 11 less minutes per game. Unbelievable numbers. But what Victor would do post All-Star break shocked the league even more. In the Spurs, first game back from the All-Star break, Victor started off hot with a 19-point, 13-rebound, 4-assist, 5-block, and 5-steal performance, a single assist away from the rare 5x5 five five stat line which only 16 players have ever recorded. Just 24 hours later, the Spurs would play the Lakers on a back-to-back, -back, and by the end of the first half, Victor found himself in 5x5 five five territory once again with 20 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals, and a block. And after a third quarter where he recorded another 4 assists, a steal, and a block, he was now just three blocks away from a 5x5 five five with 12 minutes to play. And with his elite defensive ability, he would eventually find himself just a block away. Austin Reeves attacking. Victor gets that one. He did. The block for Victor Wembinyama. So Victor Wembinyama with the first 5x5 five five game in the NBA since Yusuf Nurkic, January 1st of 2019. More NBA history from a historical 20-year-old NBA player. The youngest player to ever record a 5x5 five five and the fewest minutes ever played by a player who recorded a 5x5. Five five. You're also the only, the only other person, the second player with five blocks and five steals in consecutive games. The other person was Michael Jordan in 1987. Okay. I wonder if he, if he did it in, uh, in wins. 
not losses, you know, but uh, it's to me it's uh, secondary. So hopefully, um, in the future we can look back and think this is a good performance, you know. But it's uh, as of today, I'm, you know, I can't be satisfied with a loss. I know you. I mean, we talked about you how much you love winning. And you hate losing the same way. Of course, yeah. Nobody doubts that in the long run we're gonna be the, the winners, you know. It's uh, of course it's. I hate losing, but I stay I stay focused on the on the long run goal. Sitting at an 11 and 48 record on the season at the bottom of the conference, the one thing Chet Holmgren still had over Victor was the team's success. He was still the favorite to win the Rookie of the Year award over Chet, but the gap was small enough that one major event could cause a swing in any one of their directions. Do you care about winning Rookie of the Year? Yeah. I do. There's no question that Wimbanyana is probably going to win. He's, he's the favorite, but I think that Chet Holmgren should be right in the mix. Top two rookies squaring off for the third time. Chet Holmgren in the Thunder has won both matchups against Victor Wimbanyama and the San Antonio Spurs by an average of 31 points here, but that hasn't stopped odds makers at ESPN Bet in the Rookie of the Year race. Victor is the heavy favorite, as you can see there. And with the third iteration of Victor versus Chet, this game could dictate a big swing in those odds. Good defensive effort there from Chet Holmgren. And then Holmgren knocks down the triple. SGA in the paint. Victor got that one all the way underneath the rim. Jay Gilgis Alexander blocked away again by Victor. Trey Jones continuing to improve from the outside as Holmgren. Nice move inside. Zach Collins waiting to check in now. Holmgren, got it by Vic and a couple of others. And if he wants to continue with his association with ATB, all he's got to do is now against Holmgren. Puts it up and in. Had to be a push off, I guess. Williams to Holmgren, as well as three rebounds. Spurs lead cut to three, make it six. He's a phenomenal player. Wemby rolls around and falls in. The first half of this matchup saw a flip in what we usually saw from these two. Chet was having the better individual game with 19 points to Victor's 14, but Victor's Spurs were the team in the league. In the second half, if Victor could lead his team to a win and outplay Chet individually, he could have this award wrapped up. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Wemby got the three ball. How many times you gonna see that? A guy at seven foot two or three, putting it underneath the arm of the defense. And then Vic drains a three. Something good out of it. He fires. He scores! Vassell, oh, back to Victor. Another three. Get out of here! Oh my goodness! 28 for Victor Wembanyama. Holmgren. Trying to answer. He is stuck. Now, not only did Victor make the statement by outplaying Chet and getting the win, but he made the statement even louder with the pivotal plays against Chet. If there was ever a Rookie of the Year race, it ended here. Let's go to Rookie of the Year. Consensus one pick. Victor, Victor with Yama. Yama. It's, it's nothing. It's no. It's no. It's not even close. It's a dead boat lock when it comes to Wimby okay, 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 winning okay. the Rookie of the Year. 2010 yeah. and leading the league in block shots. And he said, "I'm him, and I want to win every award." This guy. He was pissed off that he didn't win the skills challenge. He was angry at the All-Star Weekend because Anthony Edwards screwed around. He wants to win it all. He wants it all. With the media paying a lot of attention to Victor's dominance in the past months and seeing how ambitious he truly is, the conversations in the media started to get nasty. Now the Spurs are getting a real idea of what they have and frankly, what they don't have. They said they're gonna be patient building around Victor, but Victor isn't that patient. No. I think the rest of the league has started to understand that now. When I watch him play, that man is competitive. He wants to win. And how long do you give him, Malika? A year, lot. two? Ma a year max. Because I, I don't think he wants to sit here and be at the bottom of the lottery standings. The Spurs can't treat this like a long-term rebuild. They've got to move quickly in putting uh, a real team around him. Pressure make diamonds, but pressure also burst pipes. And if the San Antonio Spurs don't act quickly, it's going to be a flood in San Antonio. The NBA media's game's already beginning with a 20-year-old rookie on a young team. But as always, Victor continues to handle things well. Yeah, I'm not skipping steps. You know, I've been told 
never skipped steps my, my whole life, but didn't stop me from running up the stairs. And uh, it's uh, something uh, I want to be a part of, you know, in the future, you know, because uh, for now I'm just a student of uh, of uh, this league, you know. This student of the game went into March looking to continue his domination from over the past two months and make more NBA history. After closing February with a statement performance against Chet, he opened March with a huge 31 point, 12 rebounds, six block and six assist game in a win against Indiana. Making it not just back to back wins for the Spurs, but back to back 25 point, 10 rebound, five assist, five block games for Victor the only rookie to ever accomplish that. Two weeks later against the Brooklyn Nets, Victor dropped another insane stat line with 33 points, 15 rebounds, seven assists, and seven blocks in another win for the Spurs. Becoming the third player in NBA history to put up this same stat line or better, the other two, Joel Embiid and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But a big question mark around Victor during the pre-draft process was injuries. Everyone worried about his durability strictly because he was 7 foot 4, but on March 29th, he would play his 65th game of the season, officially qualifying him for all the NBA awards, only missing 9 games of the first 74, completely shutting down any narratives about being injury prone. But that 65th game of the season for Victor would be a huge one. He dropped 35 points, 18 rebounds, and 7 assists in regulation, including 2 free throws that sent the game into overtime against New York. Little runner. Got him. Vassell. The tip. It's gone for Victor Wembanyama. And Brunson has 61 points. Wemby fires for three. Got it. Oh, Mama Wembanyama. And with great defense through the rest of overtime, this was enough for the Spurs to pull it out. Spurs win in overtime. 130, 126. You know, this, these efforts, these, these results, we wouldn't have gotten them at the start of the year. And we wouldn't have gotten them with you guys because y'all are helping us, you know. 70 games to the season. I still see this, this place packed every night. Love you guys. Love the support. Go Spurs, go. Not only did Victor spoil Brunson's 60-point game by chucking the game ball into the crowd, but another historic performance from Victor handed him a loss in the process. Victor became the first rookie in 30 years to have a 40-point, 20-rebound game and became the youngest player to record 40 points and 20 rebounds in league history. I think you're the youngest player, Vic, in NBA history to go for 40 and 20. If you can just kind of take us through continuing to, I know that's not the goal, but yeah. just continuing to hit markers like that. It's not the goal, but it's, it still shows, you know, it still shows things, you know, it still shows uh, um, progress. I mean, the more of those accolades I can get, the, the more I will get. And uh, it's also one of my, you know, convictions to be always unique and, uh, and different and do, do things never seen before. With just two weeks now left in the season, it was no question that Victor had the Rookie of the Year award locked up. But after a massive nine block performance against the Denver Nuggets, Victor's name was entering the conversation for an even bigger award. I know a lot of people like myself has been crowning Rudy Gobert, but we might want to be careful and take notice to what this young man is doing. I know I said on here a few little while back that um, Wimby shouldn't be the defensive player of the year and I lied. Wimby is definitely the defensive player of the year. And Victor would continue pushing the momentum forward for his defensive player of the year case. Back to back seven block games against Philly and Memphis, with that Philly game being a huge 33, 18, 6, and 7 performance. And against Memphis, he pulled out an unbelievable move we had never seen before. Oh, yeah, it is a sham god there. But then he comes back with a spin move and an easy layup. But Victor was looking to end off the year strong against a team fighting for the one seed in the Western Conference. I always like to see what our guys learned from that last game. That was a barn burner. Had a chance to win it down the street. Long one, interception. Yeah, you gotta throw that to the ceiling. Right back to Victor. Oh, Mama Wimbeck Yada! Out of the shot clock. Wimby in the paint. Drops it in. Brown the challenge here. Victor, oh, you're away. <laughs> Although not necessary. Yeah, not necessary, but still. 
By the end of the first quarter, the San Antonio Spurs held a one-point advantage, but the Nuggets had a huge second quarter, taking an 18-point lead into halftime. But this Spurs team that had won five of their last nine games was resilient, and especially that phenom Victor. Oh, super high basketball IQ. Victor for three. Uh, you do a nice job. In the span of three minutes, Victor Wimbayama has scored 17 points, cutting the lead down to eight points. And the San Antonio Spurs were now in this game in the fourth quarter. Behind 34, 12, and 5 from Wimbenyama, the Spurs knocked off one of the top seeds to finish off the season on a high note. San Antonio had won 7 of their last 11 games, and in the month of April, Wimby put up unreal averages of 25 points, 13 rebounds, 7 assists, and nearly 6 blocks per game. While the official numbers for the entire season were 21 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, and well over 3 blocks per game, a line never recorded by a rookie in the history of the NBA. And as was expected, the NBA awards season would be very generous to Victor Wembanyama, winning the Rookie of the Year award unanimously after all the talks about Chet Holmgren, but also making the All-Defensive First Team becoming the first rookie to ever do so, while finishing second in Defensive Player of the Year voting, completing one of the greatest rookie seasons in NBA history. He came into the league with unbelievable expectations, yet he somehow managed to surpass them all. But because of that, they will only continue to grow larger. How scary is it that this is the worst season of Wimby's career? Very scary for everybody. When LeBron's done, who will be the next face of the league? It has to be Victor. You know, he's going to win multiple MVPs. He's going to start winning them quickly. And the Defensive Player of the Year award will be retired in his name. No one else is ever going to win this maybe after this year. With continuously growing expectations for Victor as he passes all those we had for him before, one could say that we are setting him up for failure as they get more and more unrealistic. But as unrealistic as our expectations may seem, they still can't reach the height of those from Victor Wimbanyama. Do you feel that yourself, that you exceeded expectations? Not really, because um, not, this is not how I feel. Every day I, I try you know, to push harder and to, to do more, you know, get more achievements, uh, more more records, you know, more wins. But the next day I always tell myself that I, I you know, I didn't do enough and, it, to, you know, to push me even more. So it's my first impression is, isn't that I exceeded any expectations that I should have done more. So your own expectations are probably higher? Yeah. <laughs> 